The Unshackled Waves, episode 170. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Uh, now, most of you will have noticed we have taken on a lot more contributors uh, lately as the Unshackled uh, expands, and we've got people from all over Australia now, and I'm lucky to have here in uh, Melbourne this week our new, newly christened uh, Brisbane Bureau Chief, Martin Hartwick. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Now, so I and the, the rest of the audience can get to know you a bit better, I thought it'd be good to uh, just uh, get the, the bearings on each other's politics. Now, um, I've, I still consider myself a, a libertarian, even though um, a lot of people want to tear up my libertarian uh, card, uh, and you uh, deep down consider yourself a, a centrist. Now, uh, cent we've already got a centrist on um, on the Unshackled in Emilio. I sometimes think being a centrist is uh, fence setting. But uh, what does being a centrist uh, mean to you? I think being a centrist is uh, being able to take the the benefits or the uh, what is true in certain ideologies and discard those things which are partisan or perhaps have a, a, a come from a place of vested interest. So. Um, just like there's the cycle of you might be raised into Christianity or a religion and then you go full anti-religion and then you find a, a happy medium somewhere um, in agnosticism or perhaps, you know, you take some of the values away with you. So um, I think centrism comes from a place of exploring different ideologies and seeing that all ideologies have some basis in truth that uh, has a benefit. So it's not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So you consider somebody like me too much of an ideologue? Um, I mean, in a lot of ways, I'm, I'm an ideologue. Um, but then there's certain, you know, some people might be more comfortable saying things openly than others. You know, they, they talk about the silent majority. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you're necessarily an ideologue. Like I've met some extreme libertarians, you know, people who'll, who'll, who'll stand up, who play the devil's advocate in favor of child molesters um you know they're, they're like oh you know we need to we need to be uh think about people's liberties here so you know there's extremism in all ideologies yeah. but i i call myself a, a, a true centrist in the in the sense that i've done multiple political compass um tests over the years and i've existed in every single quadrant very close to the center but you know you shift when i was at uni uh five plus years ago i was sort of bottom left quadrant then I went sort of libertarian, then I went up, and now I'm actually, God, I might be a tanky at this rate. You know, I'm semi in the left quadrant higher up. But it, it changes depending on um, the challenges that, that we, like the, the big issues that we see in the world. So some people see it as an issue of class, some people see it as an issue of race, and we sort of uh, disagree on, 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 on different things, but, uh, yeah, it's 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 being able to suspend that uh, dissociation. So uh, pe people, what's it called? Um, where where you hear something that that doesn't fit with your ideology and you you just completely don't listen to it. Um, cognitive dissonance. So it's it's kind of that suspension of cognitive dissonance and consciousness of it um, to be able to suspend your own ego enough to go, okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe there's some truth to this. Um, but what, what I think we see now is there's this, there's this divide and, and you've got, you know, if, if you're not far left, then you can be very easily identified as, or labeled as a, a Nazi or, <laughs> or an authoritarian when it's merely a response to an emboldened left, um, and, and rapid changes in society lead to these, these backlashes. So you've got people who are, who never want to have a family who, 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 who believe in, you know. I guess hedonism, um, who, who don't have any interest in having a family. And then you've got on the other side, people who believe in family values, who, who believe in carrying on traditions and not just tearing everything down. Um, and naturally, you know, they're going to, they're, they're going to come to a loggerhead, but, um, we have to, we, ha we have to sort of realize that these extremes and these ideologies, um, come as a result of 
this rapid social upheaval and, and, and it's a result it's a reaction to a lot of different things um, which I think we'll get into later well that's why uh, you and I are in this uh, project uh, together now even though we're from different ideologies we've both recognized that the left has just got so extreme so totalitarian that uh, people on or the right or the center need to unite to basically stop the, the left's march through institutions, uh, the, the media, entertainment, and uh, of course the, the streets as well. Yes, absolutely. Like we've seen in the United States, it's probably more, more pronounced um, the need for deplatforming. And not just deplatforming, but you know, they say, we, we, we don't want to deplatform you, but they, they make it very expensive to voice your opinions by, by coming out and protesting and creating the threat of, or the implied, you know, threat of violence, it creates a justification for, uh, the police have to come out, like we saw with the Milo Yiannopoulos um, event last year. Um, they tried to put the $50,000 bill onto the event organizers, um, and the left were like, yay, we did our job. Um, but what that actually creates is uh, <laughs> a justification for, a, for, for more funding for police. So we're actually, by, by uh, the, the, the actions are creating a more authoritarian state. Well, any uh, corporation these days that doesn't so uh, tow the social justice politically correct line, uh, they, they get one-star reviews on, on Facebook, uh, yep. people uh, uh, ringing them up. There's a, there's a real climate of fear that if you, uh, as you said, say I uh, anything that's not uh, far left, then yeah, you're, la you're labeled uh, all these things. I well, I think these terms, what is it, you know, like racist, bigger, uh, Nazi, fascist, have <laughs> become uh, redundant. Like I get yeah. called it, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, but if you if you complain about it, they go, oh, you're just being a snowflake, Tim. Mm. You know, it's free speech. We have a right to give you one star reviews if we disagree with your politics. You know, one of my friends, he uh, was quite open with his ideology. Um, on some, you know, some Facebook group and a guy left a one star review on his personal business, you know, he's, he's tracked, he's pretty open about it. And he made up some BS like, oh yeah, I, I got some work done and they absolutely botched the job. And we questioned him, we're like, but aren't, don't you live in Michigan? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, could it be that you actually just oppose this guy's politics? And so you're trying to damage his livelihood. Uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty low and it's, um, I don't know. They, they, it, it could be like a anything goes. If to fight the fash, you know, you need to use everything at your disposal. Um, but it, it, <laughs> if you if you if you create an unemployed person who is employed previously, you've just created an enemy. You've created someone with less to lose. So you're actually um, creating more more radicals. If if a person loses everything, loses their livelihood, their home, their family they're going to be more likely to, to run into these extreme groups. So um, I think we need to sort of bring things back to the center and, and find uh, ways in which we can engage in dialogue that don't involve um, you know, pointless name calling or, or trying to personally damage people's livelihoods. But I think um, it's, it's, it's a tool that they use more often because they don't, they don't really have a fear of being, um, have, losing their jobs themselves. Because dare I say it, many of them are university students and aren't aren't employed. You know, I think I'm not saying that they're all. You know, they're all on the dole. But when I was of that, I was of a similar persuasion. You know, five years ago, I wasn't. You know, I, I looked at salties and on campus, and I was like, eh, you know, these guys are a bit extreme. But um, that idea of you realize that the world is is kind of messed up. And so you, you, you try to find a, a way to, a frame to put that within so things make sense. So your suffering makes sense. Um, you know, I'm not employed because of all of these, um, these, these things that are outside of my control and it's their fault uh, rather than uh, something that you need to address within yourself. And I think, you know, the left attacks Jordan Peterson um, and when he's actually helped a lot of people to get out of that rut of blaming, blame, blame, blame identity politics, um, and actually go, well, why don't I just try and, as the Christians would say, remove the plank from my own eye before trying to remove the speck from someone else's. So, and I think that's probably the best way to de-radicalize people is to help people, um, find balance in their lives and, and, and find something that makes them happy. 
because a lot of these extreme ideologues come from a place of deep unhappiness and dissatisfaction with uh, either they feel shortchanged by society or are overlooked. And so they, they, they adopt these radical in your face, you know, like anti-protein resistance with their, with their big, you know, their banners and their very provocative posters. They're designed to stir the waters because they feel an out, that they're outside. Yeah, it's easy to tell that they're full of uh, rage, uh, uh, these people, and uh, both uh, in person and, and of course, uh, uh, on the on the internet. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, like people such as you and I, we've uh, united to uh, stop the, the left, but uh, we all uh, believe in quite uh, diverse uh, and I use that 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 term in its proper sense, yep. not <laughs> not the leftist uh, diversity uh, term. Mm. And, and one of the uh, one of the differences between oh, libertarians and those of um, uh, I'd say I, a more um, or nationalist or centrist is uh, tribalism versus individuality. I'd even say modern conservatives they tend to focus more on the the individual they say we shouldn't uh, judge you know people by uh, groups uh, they, they hate uh, identity uh, politics while uh, the the alt-right and uh, white nationalists say that uh, there, there's a reason why we form uh, tribes social groups is because uh, people naturally wa uh, want to uh, be w uh, seek uh, camaraderie with their own kind yeah, and I think a lot of the social problems that we see are create, uh, created by this lack of having a family or a, f a family outside of your immediate family. So knowing your neighbours, you know, that's not as common as it used to be. You know, um, it's it's this high trust versus low trust society. So if you know most of your neighbours, you can leave your door unlocked or you can, you can your, your kid can go play down the street and you're not too worried about them getting, you know, nabbed. In a, in, a, in a low trust society, you've got um, people are easier to manipulate. So you can manipulate them through fear. Um, and, and we've got this, uh, you know, the left talks about uh, the political class using xenophobia as a, as a tool to get themselves reelected. And there is truth to that. Um, looking at the issue of uh, the South African uh, farmers, that was a grassroots uh, movement that came about. It was inspired by Lauren Southern's documentary farmlands um we were like okay the momentum's here we need to push this we need to get this to more people um and then the politicians took notice and then attached themselves to it to try and you know increase their profile and while it's good that they signal boost that it should be noted that these things were and always have uh, generally come as a, a grassroots yeah i certainly don't believe in what i call the thin air argument that uh, politicians and other activists just uh, invent uh problems and uh and get people right up about it i mean they uh, the, the immigration issue uh islam uh crime they're they're real issues they're that people uh, witness them every day that's not just they see something on the news and get uh, hysterical about it they they actually see it or well, especially with the, the crime issue in melbourne the the victims uh, are real it's it, it i think it comes down to an issue of people uh, tend to turn a blind eye to crimes that they're familiar with that are you know there might be massive domestic violence issues there might be white people committing crimes but then we see we see a crime that takes a new form so we're not used to gang violence in australia we're not used to groups of 10 or 20 you know um disenfranchised young people just walking around looking for trouble that might at least not in recent memory you know growing up um in, in my hometown there's a lot of unemployment but we didn't have gangs like that there was it was more like one-on-one -on -one crime so um i think it exists but we do we do pay more attention to it because it's a it's a new form of crime that we're not familiar with it's definitely in the when the uh, the threat is comes from oh, in the case of immigration it's foreign and that's why we're, we're beginning to see uh, tribes uh, coming back it's and, and why you hear phrases such as australia first well there's a lot of problems in the world we don't need to import them here we've got to look after us first and there's almost a well uh, this is probably a good thing a return to sort of like neighbor 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 neighborliness if that's a uh, actual word where where people are well there was a time where uh, 
for a while when people didn't even know who their their neighbors was but they they they're beginning to to turn to each other again because things are uh, th things are changing they want to be able to uh, know that they trust the people around them that people have have got their back yeah i think it sort of went through a phase of people sort of t started to take that for granted that you know they might not know their neighbor by name but they you know how you going um you just give a nod and that's it you might like i you know growing up we lived there's people down my street which i'd see all the time i never knew their name it's the same as when you go to primary school with uh, and, and and you might know 200 people by their face and you just don't know their name and after a while you're too embarrassed to ask but you know so we've we've, we've been through this this time period where you could take that trust for granted but now you can't so we have to make the effort now to form these as as Stephen Molyneux says find your tribe um we're in this time when it is uh especially since governments are turning people against each other and and, and creating these divisions it's important that we know who we can trust um you know if things were to go bad because uh I think the left and the right they both have a distrust of of big government you know and while, while it might be like oh you're fascist you must love big government um only if it's only if it's good governance i think you know uh, I, I don't believe government is ever capable of good governance there might be better <laughs> better governance than some uh, than some but uh, i definitely think putting uh, faith in in any type of government to to solve our problems is uh fallacy i mean it's misplaced, yeah. uh, i i get well during my time in the libertarian movement, I always got told this politician is a great friend of liberty and they'll do great things. And then you see them shilling for some uh, big government program. Yeah, I think the, the political class that we have now aren't leaders. They're, they actually follow, they, they, do, they, they operate on polling. You know, they'll, they'll do something if the polls show that it's, it's growing in importance, if people are talking about it. So um, we don't have leaders in the political class anymore. We have um administrators and bureaucrats who just who just go with the flow of what the people are uh the mood of the general populace is so i think yeah pop the solution doesn't come from big government the solution comes from the people and then the government follows that's i guess that's the that's how democracy is supposed to work but australia is such a nanny state and 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 people have become so accustomed to the government dealing with their problems um they we're kind of strangled and prevented from solving our own problems because then well, we wouldn't need the government as much if we if we were given the freedom to solve our own problems and definitely this uh, lack of response by politicians to as i mentioned before issues such as uh, immigration and, and crime it's led to a resurgence of uh, nationalism certainly in my experience on the unshackled uh, when we've uh, published uh, articles and news on the, the patriot movement there's been uh, so much um, interest and positive uh, reception uh, to it and as, as again probably because it's been so demonized that uh, and uh, the left they've taken it to such an extreme that we should hate our entire history here in Australia and uh, any other country the same in the UK they're all called colonizers in the in the US uh, they they still bring up the the slave trade all the time it's really pe people don't they who go about their business every day uh, you know do the right thing uh, they don't like being told that they're inherently bad people that everything around in society is oppressive and bad and they're they're part of the problem their, their response is no fuck you that's that, that, that's not true uh, i'm not going to cop that i'm not, not i'm not going to you know let you say that uh, that's true and that's why people are saying i it's important for me to be proud of my country my ancestors what uh, what they did yeah i think you can't really operate on a basis of of shame and and saying sorry all the time you know that's that's actually what turned me away from being center left was i tried to be an ally but i still copped abuse you know it's not good enough you know you can't you can't mansplain to me it's like well i was just trying to help you guys all right you know and 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 you have to have some level of self-respect and go okay well i'm not going to be spoken down to like this you know women don't like men mansplaining to them i don't like women women explaining to me and 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 why does gender have to come into it if you've got something valuable to say then say it it doesn't have to be like a it's this jockeying for status really so now there's people who who use the vehicle of feminism to advance their own interests and they seek to undermine the interests of other people 
and it's another way that uh people are divided and and they're, they're made to fight each other and now you know, whereas before it was it was considered like now now a woman is is considered a slave if she if she works for the benefit of the household and for the husband um and and she's free if she works for a corporation so uh these we have to look at these changes in society and they don't always um they might benefit a few people but overall the only reason that they're allowed to move forward as like to create these changes in society is because it benefits the ruling class it creates more consumers um, it creates more fragmented people that are fearful and they'll consume Oh, in the case of immigration, it's it's definitely what's termed a Ponzi scheme. They yes. they, they get all the the immigrants here. They they pay tax. The government likes getting the the, the revenue. Yeah, we've got uh, GDP growth. Uh, but of course, the well, governments being the inept that they are uh, at the state level, they can't keep up with the the infrastructure. There's always political fights over. We want to build this freeway. No, we want to build that freeway. Okay, if we win, we're going to tear up this uh, uh, contract to, to build a freeway. Uh, and of course, that's why we've got this population issue at the moment. And it brings me back to why governments are not good at managing uh, their, these issues. Well, elephant in the room, both, both major parties are taking money from the Chinese Communist Party. So that comes back to being a national issue of we're not planning for a quality of life for our citizens. We're, we're planning for maximized dividends on investment from foreign investors and, and all of our political class, they're, they're, they're taking cash handouts from it. You know, Sam Dastyari was just the tip of the iceberg. He was just the guy who got caught. Um, you know, and, 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 and there was that uh, Western Sydney developer who, who was wanted a 1.5 percent cut of the uh of the development fees to let the, the the chinese you know build this this new development and he got caught and he was like oh you know i'm very sorry for the damage that i've done to the party but he didn't make any apologies for basically committing treason against the australian people um he's he's paid a parliamentary salary an mp's salary to to serve our interests not the interests of foreign powers the other uh, ideology that the, the left uh, promotes is what's called globalism, is that there's no nation states where we're all part of one global community, no culture uh, is superior, uh, no people are allowed to pres preserve their, their own culture and uh, traditions, uh, it's global uh, citizenship. The and borders are just arbitrary, man. Yeah, yeah, they're just, uh, they're just imaginary lines. And I, I differ at, uh, from globalization, which is uh, trading goods, which is, which is different from trading people everywhere, because yep. I, I know that a lot of people um, uh, watching and listening to this show probably don't like buying things from, from China, but uh, overall, uh, I mean, we're, we're used to that sort of stuff, but uh, there, there's a big difference between well, uh, using something that's made in China and having, well, as you just mentioned there, uh, more Chinese people in Australia. Yeah, and, and, and you've, you've, uh, you've got the issue of when you, ha when you eventually have a certain population of, 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 of Chinese, it, nothing against the Chinese people, but they, they, the Chinese Communist Party is very good at controlling their citizens who are abroad. So they might have family members back in mainland China that they can put the screws in them if they need to. They might say, oh, oh, you've, you've found your way into this institution. Well, now you're going to spy for us or we're going to, you know, lock your family up. So it's, it's, there are, well, well, Australians, the left wing Australians might say, oh, you know, Australia's a crap nation. We're on stolen land, all of this stuff. Let's not be patriotic. The Chinese people are quite patriotic and, uh, they, they, they might come over here for opportunities to develop and whatever, but, um, there is the issue of just as in parliament there was dual citizen the dual citizenship saga we've got um a lot of people who have uh divided loyalties in australia and that's that's like that eventually that could be a fifth column if china decides to militarily expand which they're doing in the south pacific um australia wouldn't even put up a fight you might have eventually you know five percent of the australian population that actually believes in the nation of australia and the rest, which are indifferent, and then you know, thirty percent of the population who are ethnic Han Chinese, who will, 
do whatever they can to to avoid the ire of the of the of the party well thank god for section 44 of the constitution there which uh, bars uh dual citizens from uh sitting in the uh, the federal parliament but it's interesting that most yeah. politicians who've been caught up with that have actually been citizens of other uh, commonwealth uh, countries yeah and it doesn't it, that doesn't stop uh you know, foreign people oh, yeah, from, exactly. from using their money to influence. Yeah, I think Australia, Australia's sort of, we're being led by the carrot right now, but the minute we try to, the minute that any uh, politician gets in that tries to uh, advance Australian interests, uh, the, the, the Chinese are, are quick to adopt uh, trade sanctions against Australia. So we, we, we're, we're being treated like a client state eventually this the stranglehold is going to be so so comprehensive that the minute we try to even even criticize uh domestic chinese politics um they'll go okay we don't need your beef anymore and now i put a positive spin on uh, globalization but i think it's best to ask you what uh, uh your views are because obviously we have seen the the de-industrialization uh, of australia we're becoming a more uh, service uh, ba uh, based economy uh, we've seen the the car industry uh, disappear what do what do you make of that development yeah well, I think um, there's with the opening up of, of the Chinese labor market you know over the last 60 years that's that's created you know a, a, a market a global market for 1.4 billion slaves basically to that drive down uh, you know they've got the the low operating costs in Australia we've got employment standards safety standards um which is why we have such good life expectancy and also these population issues because we have um safe societies so um it it there, there's been yeah there's been negative impacts you know we've, we've had hold and shut down we've had you know all, all of this domestic manufacturing shut down which creates a slew of 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 national security issues so you know if if worst case scenario there was to be um, more than just economic warfare with China, we, we wouldn't, um, we would struggle to regain that manufacturing expertise that we've lost. You know, people, once people change careers, they, after five, 10 years, not working in a field, they'll forget how to do these things. Um, so, and, and that's another issue with like, even just something small, like natural gas exports. So we're, we're, we're exporting due to the fact that it, it's all in these, uh, global trade, these regional trade agreements. Uh, we, we sell, you know, gas at a very low price. And then we've got domestic producers that are struggling to keep their doors open because they've got high operating costs, you know, because we've got unions and good on them for, you know, the positive things that they do. I'm only here because I've got annual leave. So that's a positive. But the high operating costs, it makes it hard to compete, especially when you've got these regional trade agreements uh, kind of uh, disadvantaging us domestically. Um, it creates a snowball effect. So eventually... You know, we won't we won't have the expertise, and we'll have to import any time we want to uh, start up. It's just it's now it's just the the done thing. You export your if you can export your low skilled labor overseas, you do so. And I think what's also led to the decimation of industry in Australia is uh, you touched on it there the the red tape in the the labor market and you just look at the uh, I'm not sure if you've seen any of the the videos that that show the the amount of regulation we had hundred years ago with the mm. regulation we have now there's there's so much there's so much compliance and of course green tape as well the fact that Australia shot itself in the foot so badly when it comes to energy a, a lot of these companies are relocating because they just can't afford the electricity bills and we've got uh, uh, abundance of coal and uh, uh, uranium which we could uh, easily uh, power Australia uh, uh, cheaply, uh, the, the fact that uh, because we think we're going to uh, stop climate change just by Australia uh, alone, we've put ourselves in this uh, economic situation where we're not seeing uh, wages uh, grow, uh, we're seeing uh, unemployment, which is uh, staying uh, stagnant, and uh, that doesn't include all the people who stopped trying to find work and who are underemployed part-time. And it comes back to uh, red tape, like you say. Uh, you know, hundred years ago, most people worked for themselves. Now, um, a lot of people work for the big businesses, which um, you know we've got these duopolies that form in Australia because we've got quite a small economy. But um, 
it's the, the the red tape makes it very very expensive to operate your own business and to start your own business so um yeah that 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 comes into what we've what we've got now is the statistics are showing that only 49 percent of people are in stable full-time employment um and 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 that has a whole run on of of other it runs on to other issues so the birth rate of, of of domestic australians they go oh the birth rate's not high enough we need to import people well the alternative to that is as as we see in hungary uh, if you create the economic conditions where people feel f uh incentivize higher birth rates and bigger families um, create tax concessions and 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 the conditions in which people feel comfortable having families and you it you won't need to uh, import so many people if you create decent education systems that skill people for the jobs coming that are going to be in demand instead of just making them financial institutions that are designed to make profit um, <laughs> Then, then you won't need to ha have these, you know, four, five, seven visas coming through, and all of those things that they say are for skilled labour, but they're not really skilled at all. Well, the the reason why we have these skill shortages is again because of this uh, elitist uh, view that uh, to get ahead in life you you have to go to a university, and where they've uncut uh, university places, which means that well, it's not just an arts degree that is worthless now, but even uh, commerce and, and science degrees. And uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, TAFE and trades have been uh, neglected and uh, because, oh, you know, those are for uh, the lower uh, uh, class IQ people, uh, yet well, th those people who are getting into those, back into the traditional trades, uh, they're laughing all the way to the bank now. Yeah, um, if I if I could go back in time 10 years, I would have done a trade. I wouldn't, I, I went, to, I was lucky enough to go to a private school and, and the attitude was very much, as you've explained, you know, there was a TAFE in, in my town, but you know, ugh, those TAFE people, you know, we don't want to be like them. And actually, you know, a lot of them were probably much better off than I am now because I, I, I chose not to go down that path initially. So um, yeah, there's definitely a uh, an attitude problem that can be amended her leftist attitude problem i'd say <laughs> yeah i mean they uh, they of course uh, go out and protest every uh, university or uh, cut uh, uh, they, they still think it's the the, the the place of high society and and that's that touches on another uh problem the the elites who say we know what's good for you you're the the the, the peasants the uh, who who don't, who don't have a clue uh, and if we raise uh, any of the issues that we've just talked about, or you're just ignorant, you need us to explain it to you. Yeah, so. it's intellectual gatekeeping is mm. what university is. It's It fits a person into a mould, and then if they successfully fit into that mould, then they can get it their degree, and then they can parade themselves about as, as the arbiters of truth. Um, and, it, and someone might have a different perspective, and because they haven't got that piece of paper, suddenly their opinion is worthless. Well, you know, I went to university, I didn't finish, I don't have the piece of paper, so my opinion's worthless, everyone don't listen to me. I don't know anything, I don't have experience. Well, contrary to what the, the left believe, the people in the working class, they do read in their, in their spare time, uh, they are uh, well read and uh, they probably have uh, a greater grasp on uh, a lot of issues than uh, even, even those people who... Well, do, do they even listen to the lectures or they're just out of, out in the bar yeah i think it's it's yeah there's certainly the intellectual class is out of touch with reality it might uh it might look good on paper but when you actually try it out it doesn't you know it doesn't really apply and so th this dismissal of of working class people as as not knowing what the hell they're talking about oftentimes their lived experience is more valuable than someone's experience from that they've read in a book someone else's experience that's like third-hand knowledge so how do you see the the state of play at the moment of course uh, uh the unshackled slogan is uh, breaking the chains of control our ebook is called the the unshackled uh battlefield there obviously we were all uh i i i'd say in in thrilled by the uh, triumph of Brexit and Trump, but the, the establishments uh, returned. And there is quite a pushback uh, in Australia against uh, all of political correctness, uh, social justice. Uh, how do you see the state of play? Well, if we look at the, demo, the, the, the breakdown of 
people who consider themselves to be left wing, right wing, or centrist. We've seen a um, the right has stayed the same. A lot of people from the centre have gone to the left. So whereas before it was thirty percent was left, now it's about forty percent. The impact that that's had is, you know, we've got all these businesses and politicians who run on the basis of polling. They've obviously seen these and they've gone, okay, they've become emboldened. We can push these radical social agendas that we've wanted to for a while, but they're Fabian, so they want to push it slowly. They only, they only do it a little bit at a time because um, people forget. It's like the, the frog being boiled slowly. Um, so, But what we're actually seeing is the left overstepping their mark. They're getting ahead of themselves. Um, so... I think a lot of people's issue with the, I mean, it's a controversial issue, but I'll go there. Um, the issue of the marriage equality plebiscite. A lot of people... Call that same-sex marriage. Don't even call that marriage equality. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people who are opposed to it don't ha didn't hate gay people. They saw it as the first step down a slippery slope. Um, and now you, you can see in some countries it's, you've got, Mardi Gras parades with kids lead, you know, kids in drag leading them. And it's, it's like, it's fine to do, do what, you know, love who you want to love behind closed doors. But when you bring it out into public into, and, and you try to affect greater society, then that becomes other people's business. So it becomes, it, it becomes the place of, of good people to not just sit back and do nothing and watch while, you know, kids are sexualized. Well, uh, Martin, it's great to have you on board. Uh, you're going to be doing uh, on-the-ground reports from uh, Brisbane. It's not as exciting as it is down here no. in Melbourne, but you're going to be out there. I'll try not to get king hit. But <laughs> and, of course, uh, you're uh, down here because the Unshackled team is congregating because it's the uh, Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux Melbourne show tomorrow night, so yep. we're all pretty... Uh, pump for it. It's it's a big thing for something like this to happen in this city. Uh, so so we're hoping that uh, it'll uh, finally uh, give a bit of a blast to Melbourne. Yeah, it'll shake things up a bit. And I'll also be covering. Um, I believe it's next week. She'll be up in Brisbane, so I'll be doing coverage for that as well. Yeah. So. Oh, we look forward to it. So thanks for for coming on the show, Martin. And Thank we you. look forward to hearing more from you. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. We had an exhilarating time at the Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux Melbourne event last Friday night, which ended up being held at a venue in Melbourne's far north. The far left, headed by the Campaign Against Racism and Fascism, had been bragging for weeks about their planned protest and trained it up to the northern suburbs to try and stop people getting in, which included blocking a bus. But despite their best efforts to make the event not happen, everyone attending had a good night. We were present both in and outside the venue. We interviewed attendees, filmed the left and their abuse of those going in, including against the Unshackled specifically. We also got footage of the three leftist interruptions and ejections during Lauren's speech. The tour around the rest of Australia is continuing with uh, Sydney and Brisbane shows still to come. Uh, fingers crossed also Auckland as well. Tickets can be purchased by going to axiomatic.events. The next big name coming down under is former UKIP leader and Brexit champion Nigel Farage this September. He's visiting Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, as well as Auckland. The campaign against racism and fascism, it seems, can't wait either and are already planning a protest. Tickets, including various VIP passes, can be booked by going to nigellive.com.au. Also, please remember we can't do all these events and produce all this content without your support, so please be consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the unshackled. So thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.